I never knew Austria was a place, in all honesty. All I knew was Germany because of the media. And I feel like the media played a big role because I remember watching um, Euro Trip back in when I was little. It was about these guys who went to Germany just to meet a girl and party and have fun. So that's how I seen it as. And eat good bread and drink a lot of beer. And there's a lot of stereotypes to that, but the media kind of distorted my views. And I'm not too sure if it's true or not. And I guess now that I have some exposure, I was thinking about the the one performance where they had the, the Christmas version, but in Austria, I thought it was interesting to learn about. Definitely World War II. That's the big thing I think about when it comes to um, Germany. Think of Hitler and like the Holocaust with the Jews, a lot of hate toward a certain group. So that's a big thing you think about with the stereotypes and with the movies, with the Oktoberfest, the big event that happens. They have um, good bread, good food. It's a good place to like have fun and they're nice and party people. And as well, like a little crazy because the media kind of shows them as like, uh, like war fanatics. I like to think of Germany as a place with a, like high class, high quality um, technology as well as like weapons, especially since um, that's what I see in the media. Like Jojo, there's one guy named like, I think Strauss or something, where like he keeps coming back to fight like vampires and like he becomes a robot and he's just insane, insane German guy. Very, very interesting how they view that and I thought it was I thought it was like interesting and a little funny how they introduced him like that. But I guess being introduced to that, it's like I accepted it. I'm like, I wonder if more people will be like that. It's the closest connection I would have to that country that I'll probably never go to. Yes, I heard of Arnold Schwarzenegger, the guy that's in the Terminator, and then he's like, he was in the government, I think it was. And for the other guy, Mozart, I, I knew he was a musician, but I never did research on where they came from. And finding out that they're from the other country, like, a, I'm not too sure, I think it was Germany or Austria. I'm like, oh, wow. It's nice to see that people I know were coming from a place that I never knew existed. And then looking at them, I'm like, they're not like the media portrays. Maybe Arnold Schwarzenegger, he's really huge and built. And he's like the Terminator, which kind of connected to my the view of um, the guy who Strauss from Jojo who became a robot. So kind of already connecting the, the German people. The Mozart's a musician. I guess that kind of influences me. I'm, now I'm thinking maybe there's a lot more influential people over there. But that's just because the two people that are really famous are representing it in my head. I did not know Austria was a place until um, I went to this class. And I met my classmate who talked about uh, Christmas and then he showed me pictures of it. It looked like a very nice place to go to, very different than um, New Mexico and Albuquerque because uh, I would always lock my doors and it's a dangerous place so I'm thinking about like how if I go to Hashi it would be a lot more safe for me to go over there. I think some of them might see us as a, a group that still lives in teepees. We uh, live in hogans and pray. We would dance and dress up ceremonial I feel like some of them would see us as a group that's in a different country, like a third world in a type of way. And that's where they have the the, um, the events where they would dress up as Native Americans and like um, cowboys and pretend they're killing each other. So that, that's what they see as a race that died in the history, a race that's just left in the history textbooks. I'm looking at this picture and wow, that's a lot of, that's more Native than I am. Look at all those People dressed up. This guy's even wearing a dress. What's going on there? Teepee in the background. Buffalo and the cactus. Uh, I'm just like curious what's going on here. I'm like shocked. These guys are dressed as women. I guess to see guys is like supposed to have long hair. I used to have long hair, but not to this extent where it's like touching their knees. They all look happy. Dressing up, and one guy even has a gun. He's the cowboy, it looks like, and they're celebrating. And I'm looking at this guy on the top. Yeah, this makes me ask questions more than answer them. Like, like, um, like, are they doing this for fun, or is it just like a parade? Do they have any Native American blood inside them? 
appropriation. And yeah, honestly, I would like to attend this event just to see what it's like. Because, yeah, being, being the one native to go inside a group like this, I wonder the questions they would ask me. And I honestly would probably join in on them because that looks kind of fun. And I feel like I wouldn't get hurt. Unless if they're like a cult, but yeah, I'm just wondering. I just want more information on this picture. Now I'm looking at the next picture. Wow, this guy has a black eye and a red eye. Oh no, that's just paint. <laughs> that's a black eye. He has scribbles on his cheek. That's kind of funny, actually. The necklace. And he's holding this guy that's a cowboy, I'm assuming. Um, can't say much about here. It looks looks decent. It's accepting. So can't say much about that one. I'm gonna go on to the next one. Uh, these girls are singing. Looks like they're having fun with sticks and arrows. And they're at a parade. I think they're wearing the what is that? The headrest? Head thing? Little dresses. Shoes, socks. Hmm. Yeah. It's actually kind of a cool, cool photo, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. Do you feel offended by the I, I don't feel offended. They, they just look so happy doing that. Others would be though, I, I can tell. Like, why would they wear, um, wear um, clothes from a different culture if that's not theirs? Why would they trash on that if that's not theirs? But um, to me, it's more accepting because I'm not too involved in my culture. So I can't speak on behalf of all the Native Americans in my group. I can just appreciate the fact that that they're having fun as long as they don't become too racist. What would your grandparents say? My grandparents? Oh, I can imagine my grandma being here. She'd be laughing. She'd be like, what? What are they doing? They'll probably even come over and take a picture with her. Uh, my grandma's very loving. She she would talk to anyone and laugh about it. But maybe afterwards, like um, behind closed doors, you know, they'll, be like, they'll probably ask questions of like, why are they doing that? But um, I know Native American men, they would be more offended and they'll probably try to fight and argue with them. But yeah, that's just from my experiences. Definitely see the Native Americans as like a different world and different culture going on and with the media. And they're from a totally different country, so I can see where they're coming from. Like, I wouldn't know everything about the whole world, just where I'm from. So the same should be involved with them. Like, the textbook teaches us, the history, the movies, and then it starts as something as simple as, like, curiosity. Like, I'm curious about what happens in, like, um, in Japan because of an anime. I'm also interested in, like, um, what happens in different states, like California and Hollywood or New York and, like, all the movies that happens there. And this curiosity kind of creates a stereotype and it romanticizes like the idea of like being in a different place and you just see all the good and then you answer questions that you want to be answered in a certain way. You ask questions, I mean, and when you get those answers, you kind of create your own little world of how that's viewed. And I feel like they did that and they created this big old tradition that they happened. And I can't say much about that, but that's just how I see it. It's just like this romanticized version of a group. Definitely education. Show like a college guy, a Native American guy to them to show that like they're not gonna be like in a teepee, not gonna be dressing up in the traditional clothes. Uh, I'm sure they can embrace that culture, but I think just showing a normal person would be pretty interesting to watch. Definitely. And with that in mind, Show like the stereotypical version and show the real version. So after this interview, I look at myself as a um, Native American and people get stereotyped a lot as a Native American. With that in mind, um, I'm gonna assume that I can stereotype other groups as well. Let's say from like Italy, Mexico, Japan, USA, there's always gonna be the stereotype that I would have in mind and I'm not gonna lie that. Um, I'm always gonna assume a certain group is, uh, acts a certain way, and then I'm gonna try to accommodate that, and it could be offensive. Even if I try to treat everyone equal, there's always some offense to that. In a class, there's this one guy who talked about beef and how it's like a holy thing, so let's say I go to 
like a Chinese restaurant, I'm not going to order like beef, and that might offend him. Maybe not. Maybe he'll appreciate the fact that I did that. And with that in mind, um, the results of that could be offending people. It could be um, them being thankful. But I'm going to be honest and say that I'm always going to have like a certain view on people, and I'm going to treat them differently based off how I seen them from the media or maybe from my own view before. Like I could be scared because of the stereotypes. I could be excited to meet them because of the, the culture they have. But maybe that's how they view Native Americans. Like maybe if I wear traditional clothing and I was talking to Navajo and singing a lot, people would come over to me and then they'll have questions for me. Or I, I, they could think I'm offending them. Yep. And the source of that would be this interview. Thinking back on myself makes me think about others. So I'm gonna to try to treat everyone equal, but it's not always gonna be equal because we all come from different backgrounds. That's a very good question. Uh, the first exposure to the Native American culture or the indigenous culture here in, in the United States was Disney, I would say. It was the Disney movie Pocahontas. Uh, it was Carnival, Fasching, how we call it in Austria. Me dressing up as a cowboy, chasing girls who are dressed up as Indians. That's how we called, called them or still call them. Yeah, and over that, uh, in high school, it was more the history, the history lessons we had about the United States and the colonist times, what Europeans did to Native Americans. And yeah, and then I came here to New Mexico. And here in New Mexico, I had my first encounter with real Native American people. And that was really different than what I had seen so far and what I was used to. I think the main picture we have about Native Americans is a very exotic one. I think most of the people in Austria, maybe also in Germany, have like a fancy world they see, a, they see Native Americans riding on a horse, uh, chased by cowboys in a fancy world. Um, that's what I think is one of the first pictures we have in our heads. But because of climate change and globalization, we also got in touch, get in touch with the, with the problems the Native Americans have, not just in, in the United States, but also like in the uh, in Brazil, with the, with the rainforests. So, I think we are today very familiar with the problems many Native Americans have. And what I also can see is many Austrian Germans, they lose their religion, they don't believe in Christianity anymore, but they're very spiritual. So like my mother, for instance, she, um, yeah, she's a shamana, so she practiced Native American spiritual songs uh, from different places and there are more and more people who do that. And what we also have are the dream catchers. I know if you say it in the right way, the dream catchers. So I think every household, I think at least has one dream catcher in Austria. But it's also very funny. <laughs> yeah. So this event, uh, the Germans call it Carnival. We call it Fasching. It's set place um, in February every year. And basically, it's a huge parade in the bigger towns, in, uh, especially in the countryside. It's not that uh, celebrated anymore in the big cities, but especially in the countryside. And what people do is like the first year, everyone goes as Marvel characters. The next year, they go as cowboys. And then the following year, they go as Native Americans, or how we call you people, we call you still Indians, so we all go as Indiana, Indians, and we all make Ooh, and yeah, have a lot of wrong cliches about you. So where does it come from? I think the biggest impact was or is the media. We have a lot of Hollywood movies here in Austria and in Germany as well. And I think the whole Wild West scenery and all the Wild West movies 
uh, they're very popular in Austria and in Germany. And I think that's one of the um, main sources why we dress up as uh, Native Americans. And I also think is that everything which is different to our culture is very exotic. So I also think that uh, Native American women are very exotic to many people in uh, Austria and Germany. And I think that's the main source for it. I did. Uh, the first encounter I had with the Native American culture uh, was Chaco Canyon in the northern part of New Mexico. I was really stunned how beautiful uh, Native American culture can be. It was so different to what I used to see and used to know about Native American culture. And the next thing is uh, I learned there is no one Native American culture. There are so many. I didn't know that there are, many, there are so many different differences between the Native American cultures, like the Walatoa, the Hopi, the Sunni, the Kawa, the Navajo, the Apache. Also within those tribes, there are so many different cultures. So that was, that's something I was really surprised with. And something I also was very surprised with was to see so many people with Native American origins. I thought they were all extinct and I thought I might see one or two, but to see that many was very beautiful to me and refreshing. And I could really dive into Native American culture more than I hoped that I can do. Yes, I have. That was one of the main reasons why I chose to come here to New Mexico and not to go to a different country in the world. I just wanted to get in touch with Native American culture. The reason for that is very simple. I will be a elementary school teacher back in Austria. And part of our curriculum, we have to teach about every continent in the world. And from one certain point, we have to teach about America, Canada and the United States. And one topic will be Native Americans. And just to be able to teach the children back in Austria a right picture, a good picture, a, a accurate picture about Native Americans, you have to see the real thing. And that was the reason why I came here. And that's the reason why I'm interested in Native American culture. It changed my view on Native American culture and Native American people. So as I said before, I thought I will only see one Native American culture. Uh, that's of course not true. I've seen so much more diversity and differences and it was really refreshing to me. Uh, what was also different to me was um, when I came here, I thought like Amer Native Americans, they're only poor people mistreated by the American government, don't have any land anymore, um, don't have any place to live on. But to see people from Native American origin fighting for the rights, um, expressing the heritage, their origin, that was really cool. I really liked it. And that something which really changed my view on Native American peoples. That of course of the bad history uh, you people uh, experience, there's still so much more positive and we should more look about the positive things, not things which divide us. Yeah. So the first thing I will teach the children in elementary school is to not call you guys Indians or how we say it in German, Indiana. Um, to call you Native Americans or indigenous people. The second thing I will teach definitely is the differences there are between Native American cultures, uh, the difference between Hopi, Sunni, Apache, Cherokee, um, to show them how diverse uh, Native American culture can be and how much it offers. Um, I also want to give them the tools to have a to have a knowledge how to reflect on things when they see something bad about Native Americans on the TV. Like to have a critical mind when they see Pocahontas so they know by, them, by themselves that like Pocahontas that's a misrepresentative figure 
of Native Americans, and that's not the truth. Um, and something I want to show them is things I've experienced here, like firebread, sand painting, and that's something I want to do with them in class. Um, that's a hard question, but I think the answer might be very easy. The thing I gained was respect. The knowledge that I am not right with my opinion of other people. And just to listen, to listen a lot. Because by listening to other people and their opinions, you learn. And you can expand your views on the world. And that's something I really gained here. Because when I came to the United States, I had so many cliches about Americans, about Native Americans, about the people generally here. And I think the good thing was for me is uh, just how many cliches were just smashed like a glass we throw on the floor. <laughs> and the thing I think the source for that is just to, to know and to acknowledge where my old thoughts and views on Americans were coming from and how it changed by interacting with people here. So that's what really intercultural communication is for me in the end. It's not learning about people, it's learning through people, learning through their point of view, their, their views of points, learning through their cameras on the world, learning through their meanings um, and just to listen a lot, I think. That was one of my key sources, what I learned here. The consequences are that I got so many more friends. I had great experiences and I learned a lot. And I have a lot I can bring back to Austria. So Miguel, I think it was a pretty good interview. What are your thoughts on the interview? I really liked how you talked about the exposure and how you're going to bring it back to um, Austria. It made me think how education can like bring us together mm -hmm. and how we do um, that exposure can help you like um, change the views through a classroom and maybe even change the world. Uh, honestly, I think it's that big of an impact, especially since we're recording it here. Like who knows who's going to watch it. Right. Right. And with the views on Austria, um, I didn't really get the exposure as you did because I'm not over there, I'm in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. So it feels like you're kind of like the star of the show right now. <laughs> That's how I'm thinking of it. You had more to answer than I did. But mm -hmm. all, all I had was the media, like um, like right. Hitler, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Mozart. I didn't know they were part of it, you know? Yeah, which means you have to come to Europe once, so. <laughs> Please. <laughs> to make our me. experience even. Yeah. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it too. It was just because Especially with you, you have Native American roots, which makes it more interesting for me. Like one guy who has Western um, cultural background. And I learned a lot through our uh, interview because I came in here with some prepared questions and answers. But throughout the interview, those answers and questions changed a little bit. And I could dive more into the topic. So. Yeah, that was something really great. Yeah, and with the flashing, uh, can you can you see me over there? Like, I I want to see how that um the flashing thing is with the. That would be American. crazy to see you. I would like to be the Native American. <laughs> I would honestly yeah. dress up as it and join them. Yeah. yeah. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Whatever they do. Yeah, we definitely have to, to yeah. experience that. I definitely gotta check that out. Invite me to that. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks for the interview. Thanks for the interview. It's pretty cool.